having me. Um, today, uh, as I said, we're going to go into these activities a little bit. Um, Sherry and I, I reached out to Sherry a little while ago and just said, hey, I'm, you know, I'd be interested in you creating these activities for us. And we just kind of did a little bit of back, back and forth about, okay, what, you know, what, what am I hearing that teachers are interested in? And at the same time, what would Sherry be interested in for herself? Uh, and so um, we came up with these activities that are built around kind of uh, real life uh, experiences, uh, places, um, even um, biographies about uh, people from around the Spanish speaking world. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the core part that Sherry brought into this was to build them around the AP themes and sub themes. So if you could just mention a little bit yeah. about that and, and you know why you thought that was such an important component. Yeah, I think in a lot of schools, um, people and students especially view AP as kind of this unachievable um, level of language or, or coursework in general. And in, in world language, that's, that's not the case at all. Um, we're actually seeing and working with those AP themes from the very first day of classes with students in, in Spanish one. And, um, and so just to actually point out and be, um, be mind, being mindful of the fact that, okay, what we're, what we're currently looking at, and this activity actually ties into families and communities, or it actually ties into um, beauty and aesthetics, or it actually ties into this particular AP theme. I think that that helps students to see, to kind of build their confidence at the lower levels, knowing that, okay, I'm working towards it, um, even if I don't, don't end up being able to, to reach that level. Um, and it helps teachers to see too how they can scaffold at the lower levels to reach that AP level. Um, and so of the six AP themes, um, we've just decided to do that rotation. So, you know, each month we'll focus on a different AP theme and a different sub theme, subtopic within that, um, so that we're hitting a, a bunch of different, um, again, a bunch of different themes while we're hitting several different countries because, um, you know, we all try, we all try to, to expose our students to a variety of Spanish speaking countries. And um, because I have been fortunate enough to teach all over the world and travel all over the world, I have a lot of firsthand experience with these places and with these people and, and a lot of contacts, people still living in all of these, these places that we, we may be highlighting throughout the course of the subscriptions. You brought up a good point. I just want to highlight it that um, we are, besides the AP theme, and the sub theme, um, and the AP theme, and the sub theme are the same for four exercises in a row. We, we don't change the sub theme at all um, within that, that month, um, but we're also uh, highlighting one country a month as well. Um, and so- yeah, it gives you a chance to like, and if, if your course, if, if Beauty and Aesthetics happens to come out, if the, the um, subscription box for that month is Beauty and Aesthetics and you're not touching on that theme until you know a month or two later, go ahead and just you know keep those activities in your back pocket for when yeah. you're actually. Um, they can also serve as a really great just kind of review for vocabulary and, and those topics um, as you're getting closer to those um, AP exams. That's a good point that you made. These are standalone activities, and so you don't have to use them in the same order that we're publishing them and sharing them. You can say, you're right, yeah, um, yeah, this beauty and this sub-theme and this topic or this biography, I want to hold that off for next month. Um, and so you can do that uh, pretty easily. And um, the other point worth mentioning, I, I think I mentioned this earlier already, was um, one of the four uh, activities for each month is going to be a card events activity. So um, we're going to pull something out of probably the last three or four weeks um, before we share these, of, uh, you know, something going on in that specific country at the time, um, and do an activity around that. So let's just yeah, like for example, the, um, the current events activity for Guatemala happened to be um, authentic um, text messages from the Guatemalan government that I received on my cell phone. And so these are resources that um, you're not typically going to be able to find all of these authentic um, tech types of texts and images and things on the internet as they're just things that happen in life. And so, yeah, that was, that was the, um, the current event for, you know, the for change in the toque de queda, the, the curfew and the, um, you know, shelter in place as it's happening in Guatemala for COVID-19. Well, let's just walk through uh, one of these activities a little bit. Uh, this is about, this is a really cool one. I think this is one, I think maybe the first one that you did uh, about a um, slum in Colombia that became a tourist um, uh, destination because the inhabitants of, the, of this area decided to paint graffiti on the buildings and, you know, basically just pretty up and, and make it a cool place to visit and, uh, and show off, you know, their artistry as well. So uh, this activity happens to be, um, well, first, let's see the AP themes, um, beauty and aesthetics, and then visual arts, if you can see, and um, 
Yes. Yeah, so, so this particular um, activity, I, I also strive to choose what I think will be high interest to students. And after teaching high schoolers for 18 years, I have a pretty good idea of what that might be. And so they're all about uh, Narcos and Pablo Escobar. And um, so this, this particular activity ties right into that and like harnesses that interest that they already have for, for the, the Colombian drug lords. And so this is the neighborhood where it all went down, um, but has they fought to, to kind of uh, combat that, that negative image. Overcome that image, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, so the article itself is, uh, if you look at the AP level, so that would be the novice high to advanced, and these, um, these levels that you're looking at in the top left corner um, will coincide with the actful um, proficiency levels. So if you're looking at, there we go, if you're looking at the uh, intermediate high or advanced, um, most of our students who take the AP exam are going to fall into that intermediate high range. Um, unless you've got native speakers taking the exam, then they may and they may not um, be at that advanced um, range. Um, but uh, nonetheless, the materials um, and the, the texts and the resources used for that intermediate high and advanced activity will be a pretty much uncut authentic source that was you know, published by Spanish speakers for Spanish speakers. Um, and then along with that, um, there'll be a variety of either tasks or, um, well, always tasks, but sometimes reading comprehension, sometimes it's doing a comparación cultural, sometimes it's um, a writing task, or, and sometimes it's just a task that does not mirror an AP um, exam type of task, but it's just building the language in general. And so this activity that we're looking at right now is basically a copy paste of, of, of what you would find um, from this article online. Let me just hop up to the beginning and walk through just briefly what one of these uh, files uh, looks like in terms of the structure. So here uh, we have the novice level uh, activity um, and you can just see that briefly. And most of these activities for each level are one or two pages. Um, and then below that there are teacher notes. If I can just, um, if you wouldn't mind, Jared, just going back up to the top. So um, as you notice, um, like, for example, this first activity, if we scroll down just below the picture, you can see, okay, well, let's focus on what's, let's focus on what we do know, because a lot of times at the novice level, you might think, okay, well, I can't use this type of a text at the novice level, but um, when it's filled with cognates, and that's, that's one of the ways in which I've modified the original um, authentic text, is kind of replacing some of those um, more advanced words with cognates or simplifying the language a bit so that the student can still get the information and while, um, while bringing it to their level. It's kind of like, I don't know if you're familiar with News ELA, um, but you can select the Lexile level in that program um, based on the student's reading level. So that's what I've done with these activities. And then go ahead and boost the student's confidence with first identifying some cognates and giving a little bit of, um, like I said, bu building up their level like, okay, I actually can understand this. And then if you scroll to the, the next page, so the, the questions are broken up based on like the categories, how they're chunked in, how they're presented um, in on the first page, then the questions are then chunked as well um, to match with those three um, sections there. Um, using a lot of their, what they're seeing visually, like what colors do you see in addition to some multiple choice. So they're very, very, um, they're very attainable for the students. So they don't, they, they do see a lot of success with them. And then as um, I've mentioned the teacher notes, um, these teacher notes are specific to the novice section. And so there's teacher notes after every, um, level of the activity and so yeah, here included in those teacher notes you'll have the answers to all of the questions oh sorry that's a good point yeah, yeah. uh and then intermediate low to mid level uh, yeah this intermediate low sorry jared um but right. intermediate low to mid would be most of your level two and threes um the novice would would coincide mostly with level one although you could be used at level two as well depending on where your students are at um but yeah level two or three is where this would coincide and then again the, um, the second page here and the teacher notes with the answers and then this is the page we looked at before uh, and this uh, structure is pretty much the same structure for all the activities uh, oh that's yeah, just the terms of use there uh, so that that's the the PDF of the activities there and let's just hop over to this other one um, just to show you a different uh, one that we've done and this one is a uh, profile of Luis Anan who if you don't know is uh, the Guatemalan uh, inventor or creator of Duolingo and from just from my conversation with you, seem to be kind of a, a big person, a well-known person in Guatemala as well. Yeah, fun little uh, fun little fact here is that so I'm currently teaching at the American School of Guatemala, and I'm 
for the first time in quite a while teaching ESL to scholarship students who, who've earned that scholarship because they're, they're top students around the country, but they might not have the financial means to attend our school. And um, Luis Bonan actually was a product of our scholarship program. Uh -huh. yeah. So um, yeah, he just spoke in a symposium the other day uh, mentioning his, his background at our school. That's so cool. You know, places like that, that's been my experience um, in Chile a little bit, but in Puerto Rico, they're small enough that you can reach out to people and, and you cross over people. And it, it just really need to be in that situation because that certainly wasn't my experience in the U.S. Um, oh, it's too vast. In the big cities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, again, it's this is um, the novice level, intermediate, low to mid, and then uh, moves on to the the intermediate high to advanced level with the answers in each and the teacher notes for each. Um, I mean, I think that's about all I had uh, written down for us to talk. Is there anything else you'd like to throw in there? No, I think like you, you touch on all of the, the major points. Um, you know, a lot of times with reading comprehension, it can be, it can be overwhelming for students if they're not taught how to approach it, um, you know, by chunking the material and by identifying things that they do know. So in the teacher tips, in the teacher notes, it really, um, gives the teacher the tools to help make these, these reading, in this one in particular, uh, reading task. Um, there were some other activities. Um, do you want to go to the, the carretas de comida? And while you're doing that, I'll just, um, so it, it gives them an opportunity to um, really push their, their reading comprehension because the more exposure students have to the language and to authentic language, um, you know, the, the quicker they're going to reach that, that conversational level. Um, but without, without overwhelming them and kind of like, you know, close, uh, putting on the brakes and having them shut down completely. Um, and so you'll see how the novice takes a step even further to um, the giving the student more and more scaffolding it as we go. So this one, for example, is um, it's got quite a lot of photos um, taken um, and then a little bit of information and then jumps right into the speaking task. And that novice has the instructions in English, whereas you'll see, I believe, the um, intermediate low Nope, that one's still in um, English as well. Um, and then the AP one mirrors that Comparación Cultural um, task, which is part of the AP exam. And so, you know, we're always looking at making connections with our own culture to, to the target culture as, as early as, as the novice levels. And so you'll see those reflected in these activities as well. The other thing I wanted to mention, and, and you did mention this a little bit, but I just want to highlight is that not all of them are, not all these activities are reading comprehension. Uh, we are varying those along the way. And so the idea is to cover the four basic skills uh, and also build in cultural comparisons as well in that process. Yeah, anyway, um, I think that's, that's all I got. <laughs>